Welcome everyone and thank you for joining our webinar today. Today, we are here to speak about the new changes in the CFE in 2021, which is based on all the information that we have got so far from the ACFE, they are considered major changes. If you come to me and I've been working with ACFE teaching for more than seven years, this certificate, I consider over the seven years, the, these changes are really the most significant changes they are doing. And definitely the main reason for these changes is not because we need to do some changes, it's because we need to increase the value of the certificate. We need to make sure that this certificate will go at a higher level when we are speaking about it with organizations because they understand that it's not like in the old days, someone can sit on his computer and take the exam. Now the uh, uh, exam is gonna be monitored. Not like the old days exam will be monitored in a simple way. Now the exam is monitored in a way that would not allow anyone to cheat and to be able to get certified by someone else taking his exam or by him having the notes in front of him or by him having someone next to him helping him with, with answers. Not only that, the uh, information that they are changing in 2021, they are reflecting the current uh, demand and the skills required by certified for the exam. So how I'm gonna do our webinar today? We are gonna be discussing uh, the changes. This is the first section. The second section, we will speak with you about your current option and how can you become certified. If you have any questions, I will be here staying until the end of the session to answer all your questions. So hold on, let me start with the session. Let's speak about all the changes and speak about your current options. And later, after I finish, which is my presentation is gonna be around 20 minutes, 30 minutes. After that, we have 30 minutes for us to get all your questions. You can ask the questions later by chat or you can write them in the chat. You can write them in the question and answer or you can actually take the mic and you can answer your questions directly. So we have different options for you. We want to make sure that you'll get the maximum benefit out of the session. And you will learn, you know, how can you take the exam in 2021 and become certified? So let's get started with the concepts. The CFE 2021, what are the major changes? What ACFE said that we are gonna do to improve the value of the certificate and reflect more, you know, what uh, uh, there is demand on based on their job analysis. The first thing they are saying that we are gonna have one edition. In the old days, if you remember, ACFE, they have two editions. They have the global edition, we, they call it the international edition. And now, and before they have the US edition. So US is more, focusing based on you know, the investigation and regulations and accounting based more on US and the international edition is covering more the international laws and issues related to international accounting. ACFE for so many years, for more than 30 years, they decided to go with that where they have US edition and they have international edition because at that time US was more, most of the certified for examiners, they are from the US and some of them, they are from outside US. But today, because of the global economy we are living in, there is a massive demand on the CFE from outside US. And we can see that you know, there are so many changes in, in the, you know, the regulations happening globally that even uh, Americans who are taking the CFE, they need to be aware of because we are living in global economy. So what happened? ACFE decided to come up with one edition. So it's gonna be one edition one fraud manual, one exam, one certificate, one content. There's no, not anymore you are going to take the US edition or you are going to take the international edition. So this is the first major change that the ACFE they did. So now if you are going to go and buy the fraud manual for you to study for the CFE exam, you are going to have only one edition. We consider it like the global edition, not anymore US or international. So this is the first thing which is uh, it's considered significant, but the most important issue is updating, the update that they have done. They have done ma major update, and this major update is related to the content of the CFE exam. These are the updated you know, outline of the CFE exam. So you say, yeah, the, let me look at them. They look like similar to the one that we had before, not really so much changes. And because of that, I decided to go over and show you exactly the new outline that ACFE shared with us. 
This information is not yet published on ACAP website. They are going to be publishing this information soon, but I thought that it would be useful for you to go over it so you understand exactly what are the current changes that they have related to the exam and which percentage the exam are going to come from. So the first thing, you know, let's start with the financial section. So the financial section, now they expanded the accounting. The accounting section in, in, in the old days, it was a, a small one. You will get, you know, uh, around two or three questions from it. Now they expand the accounting section to include more international issues, to include more updates. So that way you are aware of all the, the issues that are happening here. So the accounting section, it was more expanded. And now it's representing five to 10% of the exam. Also for financial statement fraud, they decided to go and include more analysis related to financial statement fraud. And now it's including five to 10%. So you can see the financial accounting section increased to around 20%, which is in the old days, it was only around 10%. Okay, the other thing they increase is the asset misappropriation and cash receipt schemes. These, they include more kind of different schemes that are happening and what kind of prevention we need to include and it's representing five to 10%. Uh, the fraudulent uh, disbursement is representing five to 10%. There is not, not really major changes happen here. Asset misappropriation and inventory and other assets representing one to 5%. Not so much changes happen here. But in corruption, they include different schemes. So they include the section related to corruption schemes. How can we prevent and deduct fraud? Which is represent five to 10%. Uh, the theft of data intellectual property, they included more you know, safeguards related to how can we uh, uh, prevent your organization from external threats and you know, how, uh, how can we uh, differentiate between uh, you know, the competitive intelligence and uh, company uh, espionage. So all these also some concept they included in the exam. I'm going to go over them later in details, so I'm just going to uh, go quickly here. Uh, identity theft also they updated identity theft related to uh, uh, prevention and deduction and representing one to uh, five percent of the exam financial institution fraud they expanded on the uh, you know financial institution fraud by adding section related to fraud prevention and uh, deduction and more and more international schemes rather than just uh, you know local schemes uh, speaking about you know the different kind of uh, new fraud happening in credit card and debit card and and, and cyber also, they were speaking about the payment fraud, which is represent five to 10%. Uh, uh, insurance fraud, they added also another section in insurance fraud related to prevention and deduction of insurance fraud and the dif different schemes that they have related to insurance fraud. Uh, healthcare fraud, also they added another section related to the prevention and deduction of healthcare fraud and they expanded on some of these concepts. Consumer fraud, they are speaking about all the different consumer fraud and what can we do to be able to prevent and deduct consumer fraud, which is representing five to 10%. And cyber fraud, which is, this is one of the areas where they added more information about cyber fraud prevention and deduction and about responding to cyber security incident. These are major changes here they, they did. So more questions, you are gonna get around five questions to 10 questions about these issues. And finally, contract and procurement fraud. So this is the financial section. Now, someone will ask me, yeah, I just uh, registered last year in 2020 to take the exam. Are these changes are going to apply on me? No, they are not going to apply on you. They will apply on you if you registered in December, maybe this year, uh, sorry, last year, 2020, or if you registered now in January. But if you registered before, these changes are not going to apply on you. So you are going to be able to take it based on the old exam. If you registered and paid for the old exam for 2020. But there are some other changes that are going to apply on you. We are going to discuss that later. But as of the content of the exam, you are going to get the version that you have registered for. Okay, now let's speak about the law section. The law section, the breakdown is uh, first the overall uh, view of the legal system is uh, five to 10% of the exam. Uh, uh, law related to fraud, uh, 10 to 15% uh, of the exam. Uh, bankruptcy uh, fraud is about 5 to 10%. Security fraud is 5 to 10%. Money laundering is 10 to 15%. And you know, we are going to be speaking about different schemes related to money laundering. Uh, tax fraud is uh, 5 to 10, uh, 1 to 5%. And individual rights related to examination, this is major 
uh, in the exam, which is 10 to 15 percent. Now, what they added here in the law section, we are going to be speaking about that later, that they added some information related to how can we handle cases, what are the types of evidence, how can you, uh, you know, uh, uh, figure out the proper evidence that you need in your fraud investigation. So here we are speaking about criminal justice system and civil justice system. They are really significant. You get around 25% of the questions from them. And you know, basic uh, principles of uh, evidence, which is five to 10%. We are gonna be speaking, they added some, some additional information here and then testifying five to 10%. Now, what about investigation? Investigation, the good news <laughs> that investigation is, is the same. There's not really major changes in investigation. The same way we conduct investigation 2020, we conducted in 2021. But there are additional concepts that we want you to be aware of when you are conducting investigation, especially today you are conducting investigation remotely. Uh, today you are conducting investigation using more digital evidence. So the, uh, the first section is planning and conducting fraud examination, which is represent uh, five to 10%. We have collecting evidence, which is one to 5%. We have interview theory and application. This is major in the exam, which is uh, 15 to 20%. This in the old days used to, to, to uh, 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 get around 25% in the exam. Now they have 15 to 10%. But where is the, the uh, additional 5% went? Went to interviewing a suspect. Now it's representing 10 to 15%. So if you see these two sections only, they represent around 35% of the exam, which is really major. And covered examination, which is representing 5 to 10%. We have the source of information, which is 15 to 20%, which is how can, where you can find the inv uh, information for your investigation. Data analysis is 5 to 10%. Digital forensic, it's a very important. There are major questions from it, it's around 10%. And uh, uh, tracing illicit transaction, this is also you will get around 10 to 15% and reporting, uh, uh, report writing which is you get around 10%. Now, the final section is related to fraud prevention and deterrence. So in the fraud prevention and deterrence, there are also some major changes. Uh, the first section is related to understanding criminal behavior, which is 5 to 10%. So here we can uh, see they have some, some uh, other theories. In the old days, we discussed social control theory or differential reinforcement theory. They added more theories here that we are going to be tested on in the exam. You have, uh, you know, white color crimes, uh, 15 to 20 percent. This is major section in the exam. Uh, we have corporate governance. Corporate governance, nothing is changed in it, so it's the same. Uh, we have um, management fraud related responsibility and the auditor responsibility related to fraud. Here they focus more on what is the role of the internal auditor and the external auditor in fraud, because we can see, you know, they are playing more significant roles in the last couple of years. At the same time, and you know, how can you implement the proper uh, fraud prevention programs and fraud risk assessment, and you know, have the proper fraud risk management, which is uh, important in the exam. Finally, it's about you as a fraud examiner. What are the ethics that you need to follow based on the updated uh, code of ethics by ACFE? So these are most of the changes that are happening. I'm not going to go over in details, but if you want to understand the changes, the changes are going to be uploaded. Uh, 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 later on ACFP website, once ACFP will make the official announcement about the new changes and what's going to happen. But just for me to give you an understanding, because I know so many of you, you are saying, yeah, so what are the, the changes? Is it is it something really? So this is, I'm just going to go quickly over it. These are the changes that ACFP, you know, shared with us related to financial transaction. These are all the issues that are going to be changing, which is, I highlight most of them in my discussion related to the law section. These are the issues they are changing uh, related to um, investigation. These are the, uh, the issues they are changing. We are going to speak about the different type of evidence. We are going to be speaking about different uh, techniques uh, that we can use today. How can we collect the information under the data protection and make sure we are not violating the privacy of the person. We are going to be speaking about tracing the uh, illicit transaction and how can you recover the assets. Uh, uh, fraud prevention, also these are the changes. Like we said, there are new theories you need to understand when you are uh, uh, taking the exam and you need to understand all the new, uh, uh, like we said, requirements for auditors, for internal auditors and external auditors and the new update of code of ethics. So these are all the changes that are happening. 
which is they are major changes. If you look at the last couple of years and what happened in the exam, these are really major changes compared to what happened before. So this is really significant. If you ask me, this is going to take from someone who's studying 2020 version to 2021 version, some additional effort for him to be able to understand these new concepts. And why this is important? Because you are going to be tested on the new concepts. Remember, the meaning of the change in the outline of the exam, that in the questions of the exam, we are going to see new questions related definitely to the new topics and the new outline that ACFT is speaking about it now. So you are going to see around maybe 15 to 20 percent new questions in the exam. And if you don't address them properly, you are not going to be able to pass the exam. But this is not my concern. Always, when, when my students, they say, yeah, what changed in the exam? The content of the exam, I say, don't worry. Because when you are taking the class with me, I will teach you the concepts. You will be able to pass the exam. So the change on the content is not the major issue, especially if you just started and you want to pass the exam. New concept, old concept, doesn't matter. You are going to learn them and you are going to pass. The major issue that you need to really be concerned about is this. This is the new exam technical requirement. For you today, when you are going to take the exam, you are going to take the exam in completely different environment. The meaning is not like in the old days when my students, they just open their laptop and they just click on a button and the exam will open and they take their exam while they are drinking coffee and they are relaxing and maybe they are listening to music or they are like sitting and they are thinking. No, no, no. Today, the exam is going to be proctored. It's going to be monitored. The meaning ACFE, they are going to monitor your exam and your session will be recorded. Someone is going to be watching you from your camera and they are going to be watching your screen when you are taking the exam and they are going to be listening to your audio and your voice and they are going to be watching you. So in that way, you need to make sure that you don't look up, you don't look down, you don't open anything in front of you. Of course, we know you are not doing that when you are taking the exam, but like if you are just thinking about the questions, they were like, what, where are you thinking? If you are just reading the question, they say, why are you using your lips? So now the exam is going to be proctored in the same way that you take any professional exam using a, a, pro, a prometric center. So everything is going to be proctored, it's going to be uh, controlled. This is the issue that you need to be aware of because now you need to have the proper technical requirements. These are the technical requirements. You need to have updated system. You need to have updated browser. You need to make sure you do technical testing. And sometimes I know when you are taking the exam, it's going to be frustrating for you to spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes to, to make sure that everything is working before taking the exam. That will add more stress level. And at the same time, when you are looking at someone and you don't see him and he's monitoring you and he's saying, go left, go right, show me the laptop, show me what's happening, show me around. And when you are reading the question, he says, stop what, who you are talking to. It's going to be difficult. So you need to adapt to the new changes. So this is the major one of the major changes where now you are going to take the exam and the exam is going to be monitored. Now, for you to understand how the process will be done, let's watch the video that ACFE recently up, up, uh, uploaded about how are you going to take the exam in 2021? What are the new requirements? So let's watch the video together so you understand exactly all these new requirements. Hello, I'm John Gill, Vice President of Education for the ACFE. The CNE exam is proctored, so before you begin, please keep the following in mind. Both the audio and video of your exam session is being recorded. So please follow the rules and do not engage in any behavior that would cause your examination to be flagged. For example, you may not use any notes or other devices during the test. You may not read the questions aloud or interact with any other person during the test. On the data analysis, it says the, the first thing to do is conduct a uh, profile of frauds. Is that true? You must keep your eyes on the computer screen. You may not leave the room during the test. Engaging in any of these behaviors may result in your having to retake the test 
or possibly the cancellation of your application. If you just stay at the computer and keep your eyes on the screen, you will be fine. Good luck on the exam. So these are uh, 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 the issues that are going to happen, that you need to make sure that you are taking your exam where you are uh, having all this system, monitoring your screen, monitoring you, monitoring your audio. Someone will ask me, is it OK for me? Is it allowed for me to open Google translation while I'm taking the exam? Well, as of now, they say yes, but we don't know based on the system if you can actually translate it to your language. But as of now, they say maybe. Now, but this is even not the main concern for me, because if someone is monitoring you and someone is not monitoring you, it's OK. If you are studying and you are prepared, even I know it's, it's not really comfortable that someone is monitoring you, but you'll be able to pass the exam. No issue. You, you took my classes. You understand exactly the topics. You will be able to clear it. But the issue is the following, that starting from 2021, ACFE, they implemented a new policy. And this new policy is going to affect you massively. The new policy and the new changes is the following. They say for exam retake update, starting in 2021, attendees will no longer receive a free retake. So let me explain to you. In the old days, you can take the exam one time. You fail, you can take it again one time. You fail, you can take it again one time. So you have three free trial for you to take the exam. In case you fail, you can take it over and over. After that, you have to pay $100 to retake the exam. Now, starting 2021, there are no free retrial. You have one trial. In case you fail the exam, you have to pay $100 extra. In case you fail the exam, you have to pay $100 extra. So you need to consider in that case, in case you fail the exam multiple times over these four exams, you may end up paying $600, $700 extra for you to take all these parts that you paid. And that's significant amount of money. So now when you are taking the exam, the old days, you are relaxed. You'll be like, okay, if I fail the exam, I take the game. Now, if you fail the exam, it's gonna cost you $100. So you are gonna add more stress level on you when you are taking the exam. So they, you have one attempt for each section to take the exam at no cost. If you fail, you have to pay $100 to ACFE to retake the exam. This is one major change that has happened. So you need to be considering that that's going to maybe you need to clear the exam in the first time because in the old days someone will say, well, I will try on my own. But now if you don't have the proper training and the proper instruction, if you fail, it's going to cost you money. It's not free anymore. So this also major change that ACP they, they have. So let's summarize the, the changes that uh, they have. We have four major changes. Of course, until now, ACP didn't make the official announcement. So there are more changes maybe happening or less. I don't know. But as of now, the changes that we have, number one, ACFE, they are combining the international edition and the US edition in a global fraud edition. Number two, they are updating the uh, uh, outline of the exam based on all these new concepts that we discussed based on the requirement of the fraud examiner today in our uh, digital age. Number three, the exam is going to be monitored and they are going to have uh, monitoring of uh, proctoring for you when you are taking the exam, your screen and your audio. And finally, you have only one uh, a chance for you to clear the exam. Otherwise, you are going to be charged. Now, the question that I want to ask all of you, how many of you, raise your hand if you, if you agree, how many of you, you prefer to take the exam based on the old system, 2020? Anyone would like to take the exam based on the old system 2020? Where are you take the exam easily home, no monitoring. You take the exam based on the 2020 version. You take the exam where it's a three retrial. You take the exam where you know everything is smooth and simple. Well, good. We have an exception. We got an exception from ACFE that any of you who will join our February class, the online class that we are conducting in February, you will be on 2020 version, so you will not get all these updates. You will be having three trial for you to take the exam over and over, and you will take the exam with no proctoring. The exam will be all based on the old system. So all the updates that I just mentioned will not be applicable on you. So that's the good news. This is your last chance for you to take the exam based on the old model. So you will not be following all these new updates. 
So if you are serious about taking the class, not only it's important for you to do it, but at the same time, the thing that I didn't tell you that the cost of the CFE prop course uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the CFE course is actually gonna go up. The meaning the class today is listed as $1,997, including everything. The class in, in uh, February is gonna go up to $2,700 approximately. So there's around $700 increase in the price also. So you will be able to take advantage of that. I am just giving you the good news before we continue. So at least you get an understanding of, you know, that uh, do you have to go over all these changes and update? The answer is no. If you would like to take the class in February 2021, before these major changes will happen. So let's continue our presentation and then we can get your questions. So the big question that everyone is asking, why there is massive demand on the CFE certificate? Everyone is asking me, my phone, <laughs> day and night, someone calling me. I would like to join CFE, please, when is the closest class? The amount of delegates that we had just last year, last year in our online classes, we had more than 600 delegates in our online classes. Every month we have around 100 to 130 delegates joining our classes. Why there is massive demand on it? Because we are living in the digital age of fraud. But not only that, there is value for CFE. In the Middle East and globally, if you have this certificate, your salary will be much higher. Your job opportunity, especially in, in, in Corona market today, is going to be much better. So this is why I really recommend you for you to take the CFE. If you would like to study for the CFE, one way if for you to buy the fraud manual, which is you are going to buy 2,000 pages and you are going to study it on your own. Now, someone asked me, which is a very interesting question. He said, if, Iyad, if I register today without your class in January, would I be on the new system or the old system? No, you will be on the old system. Only you will be, uh, you will be sorry, on the new system. Only you will be on the old system if you register in our February class. If you register today on your own, you are going to follow all the new requirements. So the only chance for you to be able to follow the old requirement, not to uh, go over all this complication, is to attend the class. Or if you would like to do self-study, you can go do self-study. But in that case, in case you fail in the exam, now you have to pay $100 for every additional trial. And these are the four sections of the CFE exam, like we discussed them before. We have fraud prevention, financial transaction, fraud investigation, and legal element. And every exam is two hours, 100 questions, multiple choice, or true and false. Now, how can you become certified fraud examiner? First, you need to join the ACFE. If you register with us, we will do your membership, so you don't have to worry about it. Next, you need to prepare for the exam, then you need to apply for the exam, then you need to pass the exam. So these are the steps for you to take the exam. Now, what are the options for you today if you would like to study for the certificate? Thank God we have three options for you. The first option is attending our virtual training. You can attend my virtual training and I deliver it in the same way. You can see my style, you can see how I deliver, you can see our platform. It's very convenient for you to attend our classes. And you can attend it over four weeks. The way we do it, four weeks class, every week we cover one subject. So this is how we do our virtual classes. These are our upcoming schedule in February, based on the old system, 2020. So you are going to study with us three days a week in the evening from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Dubai time. Some will say, no, 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 this time is not suitable for me. Don't worry. The sessions are recorded. So the session will be recorded. So you can watch them later in case you can attend the live session for any reason. But we have our sessions three days a week. You study them, and then you can take the exam over the weekend. So one week, investigation done. Then one week, financial trans transaction and the fraud uh, schemes done. Then one week, the law. Then the fraud prevention is guaranteed with us. In four weeks, you will pass the CFE certificate. You say, yeah, it's guaranteed. I will pass the certificate. We already have more than 500 delegates who pass the exam with us in four weeks following the same format. So you're not going to be the first one. By the way, the 2020 format, not the 2021, that's going to be challenging. So this is where, this is one way for you to take it. Also, the good news, in case you would like to attend our classes face-to-face, -face, our March courses are going to be following also the uh, uh, old 2020 exam, where it's going to be everything based on 2020. 
if you would like to attend face to face, but of course the price is much higher. The price is two nine nine seven dollars, which is around three thousand dollars if you would like to join it. Now, someone asking me, is the deadline today for me to join the CFE uh, virtual class? No, we extended the deadline. You have until January 25 to join our virtual training. After January 25, the price is going to go up to to. Uh, uh, it's not going to be go up to 4,000. It's going to be go up to 2,667. So it's going to go up around 700 dollars. So my suggestion: try to join before January 25 for you to get that. At the same time, we will send you your material. We send you your study. Uh, you know, uh, uh, material online, you'll be able to start preparation. If you are in Malaysia, also you'll be able to follow the old system and you can register with us in March 29 to April 2nd. Uh, so anyone who will register with us for these classes, they will be running on the old uh, CFE platform. Now, what is included in the package, this package that we just mentioned, including everything. If you attend our online classes or you attend in-person class, is including everything. We will pay for your membership. Someone will say, what if I'm already a member? If you are already a member, we will pay for your membership next year. We will pay for your CFE exam. We will pay for your CFE prep course. Someone will say, what if I already bought the CFE prep course? We will give you $400 discount. And you will, you will get the question, the practice, you'll get money back guarantee in case you fail, you will get your money back if you follow all our instructions. You will get the fraud manual, online access, and you will get the uh, CFE study guide, which is the summary that you need to study from 75 pages highlighted, summarizing the most important concepts. You will attend our live class or our online class. And if you attend our uh, class face-to-face, uh, we will do the administration for your exam. So you can take your exam in our uh, training center. This option will be in five days, you'll be able to be certified. This option will be in four days to be certified. And this option, if you want to do self-study, which is you don't get so many benefits, which is gonna cost you significant amount of money also. You, it will take around uh, uh, three to six months for you to study. We have been conducting courses with ACFE over the last seven years. And we have massive success of our courses. We have thousands of delegates who took our courses. And these are some of the groups that we have, very nice group photos uh, uh, that we have conducted. These are some of our group photo for our online classes that we conducted in 2020. So they were really massive. <laughs> Most of them, they were happy. They passed the exam sometime in less than four weeks. And the good news that I would like to share with you, as of last month, we have more than 1,000 delegates who pass the CFE exam with us, which is it's the largest globally outside US. And we help them step by step preparing, understanding, and taking the CFE exam. So this, these are uh, uh, the issues. But it's not only about becoming certified for the examiner and saying, I am certified. That means nothing. That, in my eyes, that is only paper. What is important more than earning the certificate is having the knowledge. My approach is always focusing on the concepts in the exam, but at the same time, give you the technical knowledge to understand how to handle fraud investigation. Because remember, fraud investigation is not like sales or marketing, something you can learn later. When you are conducting your work, you need to understand how can I do the interview properly? Sorry. How can I do the interview properly? How can I understand the concepts? How can I uh, go and help the organization in preventing the fraud? So you need to understand the skills and the understanding the skills is very important and critical. And this is what we focus on the exam. So it's knowledge on one side and the certificate on one side. So we are not gonna compromise on that. And this is our online platform that we use, which is a very nice platform where everything is, is uh, organized, analyzed. So in that way you will be able to even in case you miss some of the classes or some of, of concepts you don't understand, you can go and watch them over and over. So this is the benefit of attending our online class. So I really recommend you for you to join this certificate and take the exam before all these changes will happen because these changes are going to apply for our future students. And we are going to discuss later in future sessions what are we going to do to help you overcome these changes. But as of now, it's really high, uh, highly recommended to take the exam in February or March and clear the exam before all the changes will be applicable on you. With that, I uh, would like to thank you for attending. And now we are going to open 